Hey everyone, what's up? This is Simon from Galaxies.dev back with a quick tutorial on how you can create a chat GPT bot using OpenAI. So today we're going to use Next.js because this will allow us to build both the view and also have the API function in the same project so we don't need to come up with a React application and an Express application and put everything together. No, everything will be combined in a Next.js application and we just need 10 minutes to create this super cool example where we can just input our message and then get a completion or a reply from OpenAI. AI. The only thing you need is an account for OpenAI, you can get started for free, so simply create your account, then grab your API key, put them into the project and let's build that chatbot. Get started by creating a new Next.js application using the latest version. I'm gonna go with TypeScript, ESLint, I wanna use actually the new uh, app directory so yes I want to use the experimental app directory and then we can wait until our project is ready within the project I'm gonna install the OpenAI client react use state ref so we can access the actual state of an element and then we get started with tailwind and tailwind CSS running the usual commands to finish the tailwind integration simply open the tailwind config as always and replace this and make sure that it includes your experimental app folder finally open the global SCSS and we're Gonna just replace everything with the usual import for the Tailwind components that we need. As a next step we want to create our API endpoint which is already created inside pages API right here but we need an environment file so let's create a new .env file and let's input our open API key. You can find your open API key simply by going to uh, openapi.com creating an account and then checking your API keys and no you don't need to try my one I'm gonna disable it after this video immediately. With all that in place let's create a new endpoint and create a new file generate answer.ts and we can actually get rid of the hello.ts. Within this new file we can import the next API request and next API response objects and generate both a type and the interface so we can type our results and the inputs to this function. Then we need to create our connection to the OpenAPI package, which we can do by accessing the OpenAPI key from our process environment. And then we can create the actual handler function for the API route, which uses our generate next API request uh, interface and the type response data for the next API response. Within the handler, we can finally access the prompt that's gonna be sent because we all use the TypeScript interfaces and with that prompt, we can check if it's defined or not and return an error in case we're not sending any data. If we do have a prompt, we can actually make the most important part, which is calling OpenAPI create completion. You can find more information about all the parameters here inside the documentation for completions. Uh, play around with those values. It's actually interesting to get different results using different models or using a different temperature um, or using less tokens in case you don't want to spend too much money. Once we get a result back from the API, we can grab data choices, uh, first element text, and I also recommend to call trim to roof any blank lines that might be in the beginning of that response, or otherwise simply use the string, sorry, that was a problem, and then return this from our cloud function. With all of that in place, we can already run npm run dev, which should bring up our development server right here with the default Next.js application. And we can now make a post request to our API endpoint to check if the AI integration is already working. So I've opened Insomnia and used our endpoint slash API slash generate answer with the prompt what is JavaScript and we do get back a nice text from OpenAI which means our API endpoint is working and now we just need to create the UI with Next.js. To implement the chatbot we can open the page.tsx and get rid of most of the things in here. Instead I want to add an image up here, I want to use state and I want to get two pictures that I've added to the public folder, uh, one of myself and one of a potential bot. Additionally I created an enum so we have more types and an interface for the message props and input props which will be helpful for our components. Because we're using on-click handlers and stuff like that, we have to add use client at the top of our page.tsx, otherwise we couldn't use that with Next.js. The first additional component I added is a chat message. This chat message will get a text and a from, and then we're able to render whether this comes from us and use a white background or whether it comes from a bot and then use a gray background. Additionally, we can now use our image and either use the user pick or the bot picture and make sure you're using whitespace pre-wrap otherwise we're gonna have a problem with code that is replied from chat gpt next component that we need is a chat input if 
For that, we can create a new chat input with the props on send and disabled. The chat, of course, should be disabled while we're sending something to chat GPT or wait for a response. And we're gonna do this by sending this up to our parent and then resetting the input to an empty field. Additionally, I added a handle key down so we can also submit the field by pressing enter. And this handle key down is used for the on key down of the input field. The value is bound to the input field and on change, we're gonna update the state by calling set input. Additionally, most of this is just a bit of tailwind styling and components, uh, but overall not a lot of functionality. Finally, we can add our page. Therefore, I'm gonna just remove everything that was by default on the homepage and replace it with my own implementation. So here we got a messages array, which uses uh, the package we installed. So we also get access to the messages ref, which allows us to actually get the current value and not wait for the state to be updated within our component. Within the call API function, we're gonna then display the loading. We're gonna create the message that we wanna add to our local array, which is first of all, our input and add this to our messages. Then we're gonna grab the response from our API endpoint by passing in the prompt and transforming the response to JSON. And after that, we can finally access the text from the response, create another element and add it to our array of messages as well. What follows then is a simple UI, which has a main uh, class here with a chat input, which is sticky at the top, and then a map of all of our messages passing the information to the chat message. And if we don't have any messages, we're gonna display a little fallback. As a result, this is our input and we can now ask, what is JavaScript? This will disable the input. It will show the loading indicator. It shows the message that I've sent and also give me the chat GPT uh, reply. Write some PHP code and I can press enter because we're catching the enter event as well. And then because we're using whitespace pre-web, we even get back the code reply from ChatGPT. If you enjoyed this quick walkthrough of the Next.js ChatGPT application, please hit the like button and stay subscribed to the channel. And don't forget to hit the bell icon so you get notified about the upcoming videos, live stream, and everything else that's happening on this channel. And of course, check out galaxies.dev, link to the tutorial right below the video in case galaxies.dev is already launched, which might or might not be the case, but once we're live, you can find all the code linked right below the video. Hope you enjoyed that and until next time, happy coding, Simon.